Stop the cap. Okay, so it wasn't me, but somebody said white women do fake better. Y'all see these beautiful white women back here? Stunning, baby. Gorgeous. You can say they all look alike. They're all blonde. You can say what you want to say, but they got that aesthetic down, hunty. Okay, gorgeous. Fake as fuck, though. Fake as fuck. I need you to keep that in mind. Just, just roll with me, okay? So you think they all just got this natural Nordic beauty with the blonde hair, huh? Mm-hmm. Think they ain't got no extensions? Mm-hmm. Lashes, nails, Botox, fillers, laser treatments, hell, facelifts. Women, white women start early with the facelifts, huh? You think them boobs real right there? Mm -hmm. You think them toned arms? You think that's natural? You think that cinched waist right there? You think that's natural? She had no liposuction? Uh-huh. Okay, you think? But all y'all can talk about is how fake black women are. And I will give it to you. Black women do go overboard with their beauty treatments, right? For all the money we spend, we may as well throw it down the drain because we end up looking a mess. It's the mental approach that's off. Black women want to stand out at any cost. That's paramount. That's why everything got to be super dramatic. The nails super long, the lashes super long, the hair, the butt super big. The mental approach is off. Where white women want to look well taken care of, healthy and wealthy and soft and feminine. They got that aesthetic. And I guarantee they're winning in life because of it. So I didn't say it, but I'm repeating it here. For all the money black women spend, this is what we need to be trying to look like right here, baby. They got that aesthetic down. Sorry, I said it. I swear I can't make a video without being interrupted. I either got to hide from people or I got to put my phone on silent. I'm actually recording this on my, uh, on a tablet. But, um, just so I can, you know, have something to record on other than my phone without being interrupted. So, Everybody's talking about this Slim Kim situation. I'm going to give my thoughts. I did a video yesterday and it kind of went off in the weeds and was excessively unnecessarily long. And I said, you know what? After watching a bunch of other women's videos, I was like, I need to condense this down and I need to focus on what needs to be focused on. So there's a couple things that I had in my other video that I kind of feel like I went a little bit too much into. I do want to touch on that in this video, like things like class, things like, uh, you know, being a, a bougie uh, suburbanite, which is what she sounds like, which is what she comes off as. I don't know if that's actually her background or not, but um, based on just her overall demeanor, um, you know, I, I believe that that's the background that she comes from because um, there's little slight things and, and, and little details that a lot of black women that don't come from the upper middle class uh, don't realize that people pick up on. It's just, it's little subtle things. This is why if you're, if you grew up black upper middle class, um, it's like a breath of fresh air when you come across another black person of the opposite sex that you're engaged in a relationship because with, because you, you can, you know, breathe a sigh of relief. People aren't going to look at you like you're spoiled. You're looking at the other person like, bitch, you just as spoiled as me. You know what I mean? Or more spoiled, you know, things like, uh, your parents buying you your first car and it, and a decent car at that, you know, I'm talking, you know, $35,000 and up $50,000, you know, and up, you know? Um, and so, a lot of black people can't relate to that type of stuff and they will make you feel some type of way in, in regards to that type of stuff. But, um, I had a, a black man. The reason I'm bringing that up is because I had, uh, quite a few black men point out how attractive they felt that slim Kim was. I didn't even know her name was slim Kim. I was just like, oh, you know, when I see her, I'm like, Oh yeah, I've seen her before. Um, and some of it had to do with, um, the fact that, and this is a conversation and Captain Solo and I often talk about with this whole class dynamic and, you know, white girls and, you know, they come from a particular background and they're used to, you know, bougie things. They're used to, um, you know, being accustomed to the lifestyle that their fathers provided for them, right? Patriarchal households, the whole nine. And I believe Slim Kim is Nigerian, you're part Nigerian, something like that, you know, so that may play into it. Uh, again, the black women that I have dated that have came from um, upper middle class backgrounds or, you know, backgrounds of working professional parents, uh, 
uh, one was foreign born, one was, you know, basically an immigrant, you know, and then the other one was, you know, was first generation immigrant and the other one was African American. And, um, it is refreshing, you know, when you come from that type of background and you interact with each other. But anyway, the, the, the reason I'm bringing that up is, is there, there's something to say about class and, and the way that, um, Slim Kim comes off and the way that these black men that spoke about her found her attractive. I felt like there was more going on than just her physical attractiveness. I felt like there was an aspect of class. Um, one of the things I touched on in my other video was like, there's a lot of black men that want black women who act, think and behave like suburban white women, especially when you get up there in the upper classes and those that came from, you know, the whatever upper middle class, you know, working professional parents and stuff like that. Those type of black women, the Slim Kims appeal to them because they're not they're not try hards. OK, they're th that is how they function, although I do think that it was unnecessary for a Slim Kim to make the video that she did talking about she likes being she knew that was going to trigger people especially in the black community. I don't buy for one second, you know, as somebody who came from an upper middle class background, I don't buy for one second that she didn't know that that was going to trigger people. Because as as a black person that comes from the upper middle class, um, oftentimes you do have to bite your tongue and you got to watch what you say because the culture, black American culture is rooted in prolonged exposure to poverty. You know, many of us are only one step out of poverty. The only reason where we're at is because, you know, our parents were able to go and get an education or the way that we grew up is because our parents, you know, were the were the ones that were grinding or the ones that were studying and they fell through the cracks. They got an opportunity, a, a door opened and they were able to make it. OK, and so we, you know, we're not able to just, you know, freely navigate the black community and just say certain things without getting some pushback. Again, you, you go through whatever, 25, 30 plus years of your life. By that time, you you know what you're doing. You you get it. You know what's going to trigger people. You know that there's people that are out. You know, there's people that don't like you because you you have more than they have. You you know, you 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 carry yourself a certain way. People can they look, look at you and they can smell the money, they can see the car that you're driving and they can, they can see it. Okay. Especially when, when you're in your early twenties, when you're riding around in a nice car and it's like, how the hell did they afford that shit? You know, your parents buying you vehicles and stuff like that. Like, you know, it is a breath of fresh air when you're dating, you know, other well-to-do black people or black people who came from upper middle-class backgrounds that have, that don't have to go without, and you don't have to hide that you have. You don't have to feel ashamed or, you know, people accusing you of being spoiled and whatnot. But as it pertains to her little skinny remarks, I'm like, bitch, you already knew what time it was with that. Now, um, I just wanted to bring that up, you know, about the, you know, guys and the, their appeal to her is not just how she looks. It's also the 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 class that she exudes. And I want to emphasize that because a lot of black women get into this, you know, I, you know, you know, I know what I deserve because a lot of black women, they don't like to admit it, but they have a profound inferiority complex about not just being black women, but being uh, associated with poverty. And they're trying to get the stench of poverty off of them, but they don't know how to go about doing it. OK, they usually just walk in the space. I know what I deserve. And then they go from there. But there's a lot of things that they still like and appreciate about the inner city. And they carry that shit with them. And it sticks out like a sore thumb when you're trying to move up the social ladder and people who didn't grow up like you grew up, you know, they see that they recognize that. OK, when it comes to Slim Kim, I already know that there's, you know, certain areas where there's certain things that she's just not going to do. She's not going to put herself in certain environments. She's not going to be in particular situations. There's just certain things that she's not going to do because she thinks that she's above that. And there is an aspect where black men that are looking for that, they give those women a lot more leeway than they give 
other women that are coming out of the hood that are trying to be classy and trying to be bougie because number one, they know that they didn't come from that. And then number two, they know that, or they believe strongly believe that these women have a propensity to the inner city streets and whatnot, you know, like somebody like slim Kim, um, you know, there, there's certain guys that she's not going to mess with. She may fool around with them, but you're not going to know about it. And she damn sure ain't going to allow herself to get pregnant by him and most likely will go off and get the abortion. That type of shit. OK, she 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 may she may dabble in the streets, but she ain't going to stay in the streets. And she's, and she, you know, th these are the type of women they will abort the baby if they out there, you know, quote unquote, slumming it. And a lot of black people, they do not like to have this class conversation, just like they don't like to have the weight conversation because black culture is defined by a majority rules concept. And that majority rules concept is that majority of black people are have nots. And the have nots have a different mentality than the haves. You know, so when it comes to Slim Kim and her saying what she said, I'm like, I'm still looking at her like, bitch, you know what she was doing. No, um, you know, Slim, what is it? Uh, uh, not, not not Slim phobia. What the what the heck were, you, were, the, were these women saying online? What they were talking about fat shaming versus skinny shaming is not the same thing. Overall, I agree with that, although there's way more skinny shaming in the black community than there is in other communities. So let's not forget that. There's way more skinny shaming, you know, in the black community than in other communities. But I think there's I think there's there's a lot of nuance here when it comes to um the fat shaming in the black community. Um and even the way that Kim comes off I mean Slim Kim comes off, right? Like for example, her whole demeanor Many people see that as white behavior, you know, and this is and, 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 and because white people, you know, are the dominant members of society and they basically define what is classy, what is status, what is wealth, you know what I mean? What is, you know, the, the things to have, right? The only way that black women and black men know how to uh, be, you know, bougie is pretty much through a Eurocentric lens. And a lot of black people have a problem with that. So there is so so seeing like it's funny because a lot of black women will come online and they talk about all this sprinkle, sprinkle, level up, course correction. They talk all this shit, but they really fundamentally at their core have a problem with any black person acting and behaving that way. They don't like bougie black men and they don't like bougie black women. They call bougie black men sassy because because being black and bougie is is it's not something that's defined by black people. This is why a lot of black people are more comfortable with the concept of ghetto fabulous, you know, where it's just like be ghetto, but then just give me the resources and I spend it however I want to spend it. And so basically we call it even I've gotten arguments with that with uh, Captain Solo, because some of it I see is, you know, polishing a turd, you know, like, it's like, like, like the way I see, um, black people's, you know, Southern food, a lot of that are black people turning lemons into lemonade. And, you know, we, you know, uh, it, it, you know, it's a polished turd, right? I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, you know, are, you know, chicken wings delicious or buffalo wings? You know, that's another thing, like chicken wings, like that was like the scrap. Like we didn't get the good part of the bird. We got the, the little flimsy ass wings. White people take it and turn it into buffalo wings. You know what I mean? Same thing with lobster. Lobster, they used to give that to the dock workers. It was known as the cockroach of the sea. White people, you know, during World War II, and it was a slow transition, but then all of a sudden lobster is, you know, you know, $50, $25 to $50 a plate for some lobster, right? And now, now all of a sudden it's, it's fine. It's fine cuisine, right? It's like anything white people touch, you know, is gold and it's very irritating, Right. Black guys go off. They put rims on their car. You know what I mean? They jack the car up. They got candy paint. They got Louis Vuitton seats and it's ghetto. 
white guys go and they got the engine, you know, popped out the trunk, got flames on the side of the car, you know, got the got smoke coming out of the smoke stack on the roof of the car and 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 and, and uh, you know, got it jacked up on some monster truck tires and all of a sudden it's a car show. There, there there's this been this, there's been this constant you know, a uh, uh, constant thing where everything that black people do has been devalued by not only dominant white society, but in, in many ways, black people subscribe to this themselves, where we will call things ghetto because it comes from having a lack of resources, um, where with white people, they can literally take something that black people were doing five minutes ago, you know, and then flip it around and then call it good and then turn it into something else and then try to claim ownership of it. And claim that it has it somehow has status. And so black people are extra sensitive when we get into these spaces of things that appear to be Eurocentric standards. Right. And so when it comes to black women and the way that they're listening to um, Slim Kim and her statements about she likes being slim. The, the 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 one of the things that I picked up on and where I will agree with the people that are saying fat shaming is not the same as skinny shaming is if a white woman jumped up and said, I like being white, even though she didn't say anything about black people. Right. We know the coded language. We know the dog whistles. I love being white. And and, and, and if I was if I was anything else, oh, that would just be just oh, that would just be terrible. You know, I, I feel sad if I wasn't white. Right. That's like a dig at black people. That's how we would interpret it. So her saying what she said without mentioning fat people, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We would lose our minds if a white person came through and they said that, you know, they just, yes, I'm, I'm in the black community. And let me say this out of pocket shit that has a bunch of dog whistles in it and act like nobody's going to catch it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm looking at Slim Kim like, bitch, you knew what you was doing. Like, fuck out of here. You knew what you was doing. You knew that that was going to make you go viral and trigger people and everything else like that. But with that said, it kind of opens the doors to a, a, quite a few other things because of what I see black women doing in response. OK, and and this is where black women overall, this is where you all lose and you're not you're not catching it. Like this is one of these things that seems to be inescapable, you know, with you all, you know, it just, like you, you can't get away with it. Like you just like like you just can't try as you may. You just can't. Because of these sort of, you know, societal imbalances. I, I mean, I mean, I, I've seen shit, the people are making up terms. They're tying all of this to the new Trump era. You know what I mean? And, and calling it body fascism. You know what I mean? I, I, let me make a joke that, you know, it's funny because, right, when it comes to things like colorism, a woman cannot change her color. Right. But when it comes to you know, people bring up bleaching and shit, but a woman can't change her color. But when it comes to like losing, like a woman being fat, she can lose weight. But imagine if men, because you got all these conversations about dust. Imagine if men were like, this is wallet fascism. You know, you're broke phobic. You know what I mean? That, that's what men need to start doing. You know what I mean? Because I was watching, uh, you know, for Harriet's video, and she was like talking about a uh, 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 freaking... Uh, body fascism and, and like I'm, I'm like so you're trying to conflate it, it somehow bring in uh, the general distaste for um people being fat right which is directly tied to um you know lack of health like 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 being fat like people not liking fat people is not just some arbitrary thing that people came up with being fat has has a whole bunch of deleterious effects on the body, you know, you know, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, you know, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, right? You know, it's got a whole bunch of, of, of things that go on. So people don't find fat people attractive, not just because, uh, you know, white people came in the room and came in the space with Eurocentric beauty standards. Okay. There's a reason why, um, most people around the world are not fat, even if they have access to food, the way that, that human beings have been naturally selected for y- y'all women don't like short men. 
right? Imagine if somebody, oh, that's because that's a that's a Eurocentric standard of beauty because Europeans tend to be taller than the rest of the world, right? But 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 is it the fact that women, because men engage in physical combat with one another, right, that women by nature are attracted to taller men because taller men means taller sons, which means taller, stronger offspring that can compete against other men and therefore be more reproductively successful. See, see, y'all be trying to bring in society into the space when when there's certain things that are just strictly biological. Do black men like women to be more curvaceous than other races of men? Absolutely. But black women have taken the shit entirely too far. When black men are telling you you're too damn fat, boo boo, you're too damn fat. Because black men are the most open and have the widest palette when it comes to women being, you know, of different shapes and different sizes. You know what I mean? This is the whole difference, like, when it comes to the dating apps and women only swiping, like, right, like, 5% of the time. Men are way more willing to swipe right. Even if you, even if you restrict, even if you limited their, the number of chances they could swipe right, they would still swipe right more than women would, right? Because men just have a wider palette. Some men like hour shape, hourglass shaped girls. Some men like pear shaped girls. Some men like women that are big breasted. Some men like women that have got fat asses. Women have, in terms of physicality, y'all, y'all women already have way more leeway, way more leeway than men do. Okay, men, it's like. Like even when it comes to muscles, like I'll give women, I'll say women don't particularly care all that much for muscles unless the man is tall. When the man is tall and he has muscles, it's like, oh my God. But a short dude having muscles, yeah, they would prefer the short dude to have muscles than not have muscles, but it's still a huge ding against him because he's short. You know, and again, you know, just like colorism, a man cannot change his height. But for some reason, that seems to be overlooked when the women want to point to the men and make it all about, oh, the evils of men. It's either the evils of men or it's the evils of patriarchy or it's the evils of the, you know, the system of white supremacy. And this is where, like, to me, black women just lose across the board. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I've had several brothers tell me that they find Slim Kim attractive. How come Slim Kim has never come up when y'all want to talk about colorism and you want to talk about you know, what black women are attractive. Why do you throw, you know, y'all like, Leslie Jones looks good, right? You know, you know, what about, uh, who's the, who's Gabaray Sidibe? You know, y'all be bringing up bullshit a lot of times. Not always, but a lot of times. Y'all be bringing up women that are not, you know, I don't want to use the term conventionally attractive, right? But I'm saying Slim Kim is conventionally attractive, I think any I don't think most people would have an issue, you know, with the way that she looks. Although sometimes I don't know whether it's the lighting or whatnot, but she kind of looks like she's got like a five o'clock shadow going on because she's the lower part of her jaw is hyper pigmented to the rest of her face. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that, but I have noticed that about her. But still, nonetheless, I still see her as an attractive woman. She's got a nice smile, got nice lips. You know what I mean? Got, you know, big round brown eyes. Right. You know, that and got, you know, that's sort of like you know, female neoteny to a degree. Okay. Men find that appealing, you know? And, and again, uh, I saw some images of how she's built. Okay. She's slim, but she ain't got, she's, she doesn't have enough curves for me. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I, I can go as slim as she is, but I would prefer a Jasmine Kendrick or, uh, a Fatima Diame, you know, the Spanish long jump runner. Okay. You can give me that all day. I'm going to choose that all day. I'm picking that over, you know, who's the, what the, what the chick is, uh, there's some other African model chicks. Who's in the African model chick recently that's, um, that people are talking about. I can't think, I can't think off the top of my head, but, um, damn, I can't, th- oh, the chick that was on the runway at Met Gala, the black chick with the diamonds and shit all over her, right? Very attractive for like, you know, Milan and, the walkways and the runways of Europe and everything else like that. But real talk, let's face it. She ain't built like shit, like the way the African-Americans, like we don't like women to be like that Dinka tribe, Nilotic, you know, type of built, like where they're just straight up and down, like, 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 like the freaking, 
the 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 genation whatever the, the genations what 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 aliens were those the cloning aliens in fucking Star Wars you know that lived on the water world right a lot of the nilotic dinka tribe looking women that's what they look like i don't know where she's from i know fatima diame is uh, i think she's senegalese you know what i mean but she got she got she got some curves on her despite the fact that she's tall and slim so there's again there's nuances in there you know i don't you know but um I think the thing that the, it, it was so crazy is most black people, right? Most black uh, Africans are on the slimmer side. They're not fat. When we talk about how, you know, ancient Egypt was black African and all that other stuff, you don't see any fat people in those images. You don't see any, any, any people fat, like, you know, African Americans who eat nothing but processed food. You don't see any women that look like that. OK, or men that that look like, you know, the way we look over here with the processed food. Yes, West Africans tend to like women to be a little bit more bodacious and whatnot. But this normalizing of, you know, uh, fatness based off of westernized processed food. Like, I don't know where people got the idea that that was like somehow, you know, the, the that was somehow the most African state of being in the world. I don't know. I don't know where that came from, but, um, I feel like the, 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 the idea that we put any sort of standard or let me say this black women in particular, put any sort of standard in the Eurocentric box is, I mean, that to me, that's like the death of black women, like in terms of like where African-American women are going and, you know, all the shit that y'all talk about, the things that you want to change. Um, you know, it's like it's like your perfect world is a world where black women can look any way that they want, be any size that they want. And 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 black men would be we would be wealthy. We would have resources to splurge on black women. Right. And provide for them and the families and the communities looking like Wakanda. But then we operate in this paradigm of equality with our women where we got to ask our women permission before we do X, Y and Z. And then we can't put any demands or standards on black women because that would be Eurocentric, misogynistic capitalism, whatever. Right. You know, what I mean, and so it's just a situation like where you want to call any and everything fascism or somehow problematic or give it some new woke label Right. If it doesn't allow you to just basically run around and do whatever the fuck you want to do. And this is why, in my opinion, black African-American women in particular, you all will continue to lose. OK, men with money y'all running around the Internet talking about dusty. Right. Talking about, you know, broke phobia. Right. You're broke phobic. That's going to be my new term. Y'all are broke phobic. Right. Since you want to run around, and talk about fat phobic and all these other phobias. Right. All these other isms that you like to throw out. You're broke phobic. OK, so so y'all run around and you talk about Dusty and and you talk about how you want to level up and you want to uh, uh, you know, have access to X, Y and Z. OK, that those spaces have standards. And the standards are, you know, to be well dressed, be well kept, smell good, be in shape, you know, physically fit. You don't got to be a bodybuilder, but you got to be physically fit. OK, morbidly obese or, o or overweight women in that space do not catch a premium. I've, I've been on the line for all these all these years, over a decade, asking black women like, OK, like, show me to show me this. Show me these wealthy black men that are riding around and, you know, they're, you know, expensive cars with a fat woman in the passenger seat. Y'all can't show me not one picture, not one picture, even a drug dealer. Let a black man that's in poverty sell some fentanyl, get, sell some drugs, and he's making money, and he goes out and gets himself, you know, the, the Dodge Charger, Scat Pack, and all that other shit, put the rims on it, okay, he is going to have the chick with the smallest waist and the fattest ass in the entire hood, the, like, that's what the fantasy is, that's what the men want, you can't force men to spend money on what they don't want. It does it like it doesn't even matter. The reason why th th some of these extra stigmas are there is because nobody really wants it like that. It doesn't catch a premium. 
And this is where the women, they come through and they try to blame the men. Ah, see, you guys are the problem. And that's why. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Y'all get mad. Y'all get mad at that shit. You know, but there's nothing, there's nothing that you can do about it. There's literally nothing that you can do about it. Because we, as men, we like what we like. We like what we like. And I'm not just talking, I'm not saying that, you know, like you get the colorist guys will come through and talk about, you know, personal preference. Like, but this is actually an area of personal preference. You know, there's biological reasons why men don't like, you know, fat women. There's biological reasons, there's health reasons. You know, I mean, even when it comes to pregnancy, you start getting into, you know, freaking, um, you know, uh, um, gestational diabetes, Right. Which comes with this whole a whole other set of problems where you get these, you know, uh, insulin. I think it's insulin dependent growth factor. Right. When you got all this glucose just floating around and and, and you got, you know, all this insulin. Right. That the, 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 the babies, you know, producing, trying to deal with all this damn uh, uh, sugar. Right. I think the baby is the one that's producing it, not the mother. I could be wrong. But um. You end up with these super giant mega babies. Go on, go on, um, go on Google and type in um, gestational diabetes, and you'll see these super mega giant babies. They're so big that they can't come down the birth canal. So by default, you're going to end up with the mother having to get a C-section. It doesn't matter how wide her hips are; the baby's just too big, period, to come down the birth canal. It's one of the problems with women who are, um, you know, excessively overweight in pregnancy. You know, people want to talk about black women die, you know, when it comes to pregnancy. I hear all these women saying this online, you know, talking about, you know, bringing up during the election how black women, you know, are, you know, the world doesn't care about black women. And I'm like, there's other reasons why black women die giving childbirth. And much of it has to revolve around the fact that African-American women are the fattest women when it comes to uh, them giving, you know, when they give birth, there's a direct correlation there. I don't know why everybody seems to overlook that. They just hear a headline and then just, you know, sprint off and run with it. And I'm like, no, like the black people have health problems that are tied to, you know, systematic racism, white supremacy, economic deprivation and discrimination and all that other shit, which leads to black people eating poorly and having poor uh, uh, you know, uh, diet due to, uh, you know, processed food, high fructose corn syrup, right? All this shit. And then, you know, again, uh, lack of access to health care. So they're big as a house. Then they mess around. Okay. No health care. Never been to a doctor. Get pregnant. Don't go to visit. Don't go to, um, uh, um, uh, don't visit their physician, you know, during pregnancy or their OBGYN. And then, you know, they end up with these complications during pregnancy and then the mother ends up dying. Right. You know, who was the guy in New York that was selling loose cigarettes and and and, and got choked out. Right. And. Um, and uh, his sister, his sister died, his sister was protesting for him. His sister died of a massive heart attack. Overweight. Just, I mean, she was just a, as big as he was female version of him. OK, so the the idea the 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 reason people are not interested in people who are overweight have i seen attractive overweight people yeah sure but i'm to most people they would look better if they lost the weight but the reason why people are not attracted to you know or or these people are not prized is there's a biological reason behind that it's not just some science uh, some societal reason directly tied to the system of racism and white supremacy it seems to me like black women don't want there to be a standard as much as y'all talk about sprinkle, sprinkle, and you talk about lifestyles and all this other shit. Like you, all of you just act like you can just walk into the space. And these are spaces where you literally want other individuals, men to pay your way. Like you're going to shame them into paying your way, or you're going to shame them into choosing you. That's not going to happen. It's just simply not going to happen. Now, again, do I think it was unnecessary for Slim Kim to come up and say what she said? Yeah, it was it was unnecessary. Like like to sit there and pretend like she didn't know that she was going to get clapped at like that was dumb and then come out with the apology letter like it was dumb. It was just designed to trigger black women. 
But all the women, the, the vast majority of videos that I saw from black women responding to Slim, none of them looked as good as Slim Kim. None of them. They all were a bunch of big bags. Big bags, chicks with tattoos on the, on the um, I was going to say the extensor aspect of their palm. Uh, the the freaking on the back hand side of their palm. You know, I don't know why black women are still out here getting tattoos and shit. I'm like, you're locking yourself into being forever associated with poverty. Stop doing that if you're trying to quote unquote level up. Go get the laser surgery. Get rid of the fucking tattoos. You know what I mean? You're, gonna, you're already going to have a hard enough time trying to fake like you actually deserve, you know, that type of background. Like they're that type, those type of access to resources and whatnot, because you don't come from the right background. You're already going to have a hard time, you know, doing that. And again, like I said, you know, there's a lot more leeway that the woman like Slim Kim is going to get because the men don't have to worry about the type of situation she's going to put herself in. She ain't going to be around certain crowds and certain peoples based off of her whole, the whole belief system that rolls into, you know, coming from a background like that. I, I had this conversation with black women before, you know, I remember when Humble Queen came at me, she was like, my son's not going to be self-hating like you, SWP. And I was like, there's no way for you to take him out of the hood and put him in some special school that you think, you know, because, you know, my son deserves the best. There's no way for you to take him out of the environment of the inner city black community and put him in a predominantly white environment or a bougie environment and not have him believing that he's too good for the environment that you took him out of because you believe he's too good for that environment or you don't want him to be affected by the negative aspects of that environment. So, you know, it's just like, it's like Pete, like when I listen to women, these women bitching and moan, it's like they're bitching about nothing. They're bitching about shit that's not going to change. You know, it's, it's like a constant state of victimhood. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like these, like, I, like what I know, what I don't understand with black women, it's like, you know, fighting racism and white supremacy, like, that's like one thing. But like, black women took the shit to a whole nother level with all this super leftist, woke this inclusive, you know, uh, intersectionality bullshit. You've muddied the waters. You know, instead of like focusing on one aspect that can actually be dealt with and tackled or whatever, you dive into all that. Well, what about everybody? Oh, we got a Noah's Ark it. We got a Noah's Ark everything. And then all you end up with is this is space where there's absolutely no standards. There's no structure. There's just there's just nothing. And nobody wants to be in that space, especially people who have that you want access to what the fuck they got or you want them to, to share in particular men. Men and men are not grinding and busting their ass off and working hard so that they can have a woman that they're not attracted to in the passenger seat. And the lack of attraction starts with women who are too damn big, too damn big. Like when Kevin used to be up there talking about you, you weigh more than the average man. No woman should weigh more than the average man. OK, should, you should not weigh more than the average man. But you got women, you know, out here that that that's, you know, that's what is very prevalent in the black community. You know, it just it just I, like I get it because black women in particular are very sensitive. Now, nah, I'm not even going to say black women in particular, black people, because I get this from black men as well. They're very sensitive to the idea of standards because white supremacy has done a doozy on us to where we associate any sort of standard with the artificial, um, uh, uh, you know, arbitrary uh, uh, standard imposed onto us by white people, where white people just walk in the room and say it is the way, and 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 people are like, why is it the way? Like, why? Like, why? Why? Because you walked in and said, because I'm white and I said so. And so because of that, black people struggle to even establish standards for themselves. We struggle to do that because we were like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, if I establish a standard, am I being just like those evil white people? Oh, no, I'm not. I don't want to be like that. OK, no standards. Abolish all standards. And I'm like, you can't abolish all standards. You can't abolish all standards, you know, but um, at the end of the day, the women that are too damn big, the women that look unhealthy, you're just not going to be picked. 
You're not going to be picked. You're just going to be bitching into the void because nobody cares because men don't want that. They don't care about what they don't want. And it just seems like there's just I mean, you just you, you guys just keep tacking shit onto the list of 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 things that you're trying to sell men that men don't want. And then you wonder why you're losing or you wonder why you're the most unwed or you wonder why you're the most single. And it's like, damn, I'm like, I'm like, wait, just make up something like where is it where a black man who likes black women is interested in black women? Where does he get what he wants? Where are you going to try to meet him halfway? Where are you going to you, uh, you talk to the women? He's got to be rich. He's got to be balling. He got in his car. He got to be six foot. You know, he got he got to go to the gym uh, six days a week. You know, what I mean, black women all over the Internet talking this shit, popping balloons like crazy. Right. This shit had nothing to do with black men. You got a, a woman up there talking about you know, that she likes being skinny, which again, I think was designed to trigger people, but y'all like, let yourselves be triggered by the shit. But what it exposed is it exposed just how much black women are not, you know, uh, 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 in it for any sort of change. You know what I mean? Like, especially being like, like I can see if black women weren't the fattest, but they are the fattest. They are the fattest, which is why all these women had a problem with what was being saying, because black women are too damn big. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. It's not a secret. Everybody can see it. Black women be waddling their asses all over, all up and down the street. Okay. You know, and I can give black women grace because I can say, you know, that's poverty related. That's, you know, that's lack of access to, you know, fresh produce, lack of access to, you know, unprocessed food, lack of access to, you know, uh, gyms. I mean, I could go I could go right there with you. But the but it's the issue is the mindset where y'all try to say that this is OK. I'll give you I don't have access to this. Da, 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 da. You know, but but when you try to make it like it's OK for you to be this way, not that, you know, I need these things in place so that I can get to where I need to get. See, those are that that's two different mentalities right there. Right. If black women were like, you know, uh, you know, being big is not it ain't where it's at, you know, but, you know, because the community is broken or whatever, you know, you know, I, I would like it to, you know, whatever, lose the weight. But it's difficult because these things are in place. That's a totally different conversation you're having with black men than where you're trying to normalize being 200 pounds at five foot four. Those are two different conversations. You know, but I mean, it just goes to show you, I mean, bottom line, I mean, you got women young and old that are either the, you know, the young women to me, I'm like, y'all bitches ain't got no goddamn excuse. You, you young, you ain't got no fucking kids. Why are you so goddamn big? The women that had kids. Okay. Again, age and babies are going to put weight on a woman and make it more difficult for her to lose weight. That's understandable. Okay. But, and it, but you, then you get women, you get women that are that like 40 plus and, and they're hearing some 20 some year old talk about, uh, you know, uh, and I don't know how old Kim is, what she's like, 20, 30. I don't know how old she is. But anyway, you get a woman, a young woman talking about being slim. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to look like in your prime. You're not supposed to be big as a house in your damn prime. And many of you all, you you have expired out of your prime. And, and, and no matter how much work you put in, you're never going to go back to being that. Because that was, you know, 20 years ago for you or 15 years ago for you or 10 years ago for you. You're never going to go back to being that. You know, and it's like, where is the mature conversation where you where you exit the conversation? You're not in your prime anymore. You're not you're not turning heads anymore. Nobody's looking at you like that anymore. OK, you're a grown ass woman with with grown kids. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, you're supposed to transition, you know, into being a wise woman. Y'all, y'all, some of y'all are like niggas in the streets that just stay in the streets forever. You're like them old dudes that still cock their heads to the side wearing a fucking Omega Sci-Fi purple jacket. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just like it's like, dude, like, you, you know what I'm talking about? The ones that still rock it like it's 1996. 
You know what I mean? I'm like, why is your head, why is your hat cocked to the side with yellow and gold or excuse me, purple and gold? Why is your shit cocked to the side like you still a young man and, and you like in your, you're like 57 years old. Come on, man. I saw I saw a, 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 a image of a dude, you know, I was looking like that. I was like, this is retarded. I'm like, this dude is he never left college mentally. OK, I mean, this is where, you know, when black women become older, like this is where you're not the sexy thing anymore. You're supposed to trans. If you miss the bus, you miss the bus. Again, going back to what Captain Solo says, you only get one trip around this motherfucker. That's just the reality of the situation. You know what I mean? You need to go off and be a, a hoteptress high priestess or something like that and get respect to Shahrazad, Shahrazad Ali way. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You don't need to be over there in the conversations about young women and wait. You know what I mean? Some of these women are just I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, and so, no, some of these other women, they don't even know what they look like. I'm like, just I mean, again, it's not just the women being big backs. I mean, they just. Like like when Kim gets up on the camera, and this goes back to Kevin Samuels, when she gets up on the camera, makeup done, hair done, she looks good when she lip gloss popping. Oh, she knows how to accept, accentuate her Nigerian lips, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, she, she she got all type of light reflecting off of her lips. That's why guys are looking at her, like, right? But you get all these other women. Y'all want to go out here. Y'all want to look a hot damn mess. Y'all want to call Kevin Samuels show back in the day when he had a million subs and you calling in his show with a bonnet on your head talking about, I want a high value man that makes six figures and Kevin helped me out. I don't know why I ain't got a man. Bitch, look how you got on the motherfucking camera. This is your time to shine and, 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 and promote yourself to the world. People should be it should be like Instagram. People should be in the comment section talking about where her at. What's her at at? Yeah, what's her at? What's her name? No, no, but you want to call Kevin with a bonnet on, talking about you looking for a six foot seven, you know, 250 pound, you know, cock strong dude that's making seven figures. It's retarded. But, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else for me to touch on. I think that's pretty much it. I, I'm just, uh, what's crazy to me is like, you know, as much as black women talk about they want to elevate themselves and one this is how look at how y'all react to a black woman that's attractive, that's bougie. There's a lot of see, there's a lot of shit that y'all got going on internally where y'all all of y'all are not at peace with a black female excellence, so to speak. Y'all really not at peace with that shit. There's a lot of jealousy in there in this in the so-called sisterhood. It's a lot of jealousy. Y'all y'all hating on each other. You know what I mean? Y'all like to pretend like it's all big one, one big happy family sisterhood when y'all are over there competing like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? And I'm saying embrace to compete. Y'all don't even like to compete internally with each other. It's, you already know what time it is when, when you start talking about going over the fence with other races of women. There's only a handful select group of black women that know how to play the game, that they can go out here and they can attract all different type of men of all different type of races. There's only a select, a small, it's a small group. It's a small group of black women that can actually pull off Slim Kim. The rest of y'all, nah, man. Y'all y'all ain't, you, you just exist. That's how men look at you. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. That is how men look at you. They're like, oh, you know, she's there. She's, but we're not fantasizing about which, about you. We're not rubbing one out about you. We're not saying, ooh, let me get my money up so that one day I could possibly get her. Like, we're not saying that about you. And again, y'all can jump up and you can say you don't care and this, that, and the third. But again, I don't buy that bullshit because you're always constantly talking about, you know, us and what we're doing and who we're with. And, oh, my God, you're over the fence. and You're taking your resources over the fence. Uh, you, know, you know, you're always running around just like fucking just bitching like the Tasmanian devil title. Just like that. That's that's y'all online every day about men that you claim you know you don't care about and and, and, and wishing death on us and everything else. No, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Y'all, a lot of y'all are thirsty and starved for attention. 
star for attention. You know, but um, like I like uh, the clip of that woman talking about a uh, uh, freaking uh, white girls do fake better. You know what I mean? And 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 she said it. She laid she laid that that laid that shit out. You know, black women be overdoing it, getting their tips from drag queens and the LGBT community. Like it's everything is just there's just so much wrong. And I don't say that just to just to put black women down, but there's so much wrong with the way that they think, the way that they observe, the way that they react to shit, the way that they feel. Like it's just so much wrong. Like it's 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 you know, going back to the whole, you know, black men jumping up and down about Slim Kim. I, I've heard nothing but positive dudes come out of black men's mouth about ain't nobody go, oh, she too dark skinned. Ain't nobody talking that. They like her aesthetic. They like her classiness. They like the way that she, you know, comes off like a delicate flower. She ain't up there trying to be no strong, independent woman, you know, fist in the air. She ain't doing none of that. They, they are looking at her as an object of affection. You know what I mean? They're just like, yeah, man, I just, I just want to, you know, just lay in the bed, you know, with, with their head in, you know, her bosom, you know, as she's like, playing you know with the with the top of her scalp or their scalp and massaging it or some shit like that with her with her nails you know in their head right that's what they want when they look at her they're not up there trying to get you know uh what do you want to call it you know trying to you know looking at her like many how many of these other women come off online she don't come off fake like you know uh shira seven she don't come off like shira a sprinkle, sprinkle. You know what I mean? That's forced. Shira got a whole bunch of trauma and, you know, you know, prolonged exposure to poverty. And she's Shira is trying to escape, escape and not go back to poverty. Bougie black women that actually came from the, you know, the upper middle class and whatnot. They're they're like rested in the space. They don't ever think that they're going to fall into that. They might. It's always a possibility, but they don't think that they're going to fall into that. And chances are they won't because it's going to be some dude that likes the way that she looks. And, you know, he's going to freaking fancy her. And he's he's going, you know, you got to fight for shit like that as a dude. Two dudes with money. I could definitely see two dudes with money trying to get to her because they know that when they put her in this space, she's going to play the role that they want her to play. And she's just going to be on autopilot. They don't have to teach her. They don't have to coach her. They, none of that shit. She's just going to be on autopilot because of the demeanor that she has and the superiority complex that she has about where she is and what she is and isn't willing to see. She's comfortable in that space. Again, I could be wrong, but this is just the perception that she gives me. She's comfortable in that space. Many other black women, y'all ain't comfortable in that space. You, you're like paranoid schizophrenics running around where, you know, hearing voices, worried about what other people are thinking and doing and everything else like that. There's one thing that the people from the suburbs or upper middle class have over the people in the inner city. OK, when they don't, when the people from the burbs or the upper middle class, when they don't give a fuck about something, when they deem it as beneath them, that is it. It is sealed off. And that's all there is to it. Nothing that is said affects them from that space. They don't care. They don't care. They I mean, I, I cannot emphasize to you how much they do not care. Because as far as they're concerned, it's beneath them. And I know that a lot of people from the inner city, they look at that and they're like, ah, see, we hate that about them. But that's what keeps them in their happy place. That's what keeps them in their frame of mind. And when you're running around talking about trying to level up and upgrade and everything else, you got to understand how that space works. It's like trying to participate in corporate America. If you don't want to play the game of corporate America, you won't get far in corporate America. You got to play the game. You got to practice your fake laugh. <laughs> oh, Bob, you're so funny. <laughs> you got to do the fake shit. If you if you ain't the type to do that, you want to keep it a buck, keep it real. You want to do all that bullshit. You're not going to make it very far because, again, you know, white people dominate that space and they've the one, they're the ones that defined it. But when y'all talk about moving up class wise, socioeconomically and whatnot, you know, 
bougie black people on the boo on the black end of the upper middle class or whatever, they technically define that space. Even though you want to say it's borrowed from white society, they do technically speak and define that space. You're not going to come in there and in and, and, and that space and try to redefine things. Everything from beauty to what's ghetto, what's not ghetto and, and, all, and all of that. There's, you know, there's a lot of nuances, you know, in there that, you know, again, Captain Solo and I, we have talked about. You know, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You got to, you know, go in there with a scalpel and pick and choose. You can't just say all this is ghetto and then just simply dismiss it and throw it all out. You know, and, 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 and to a great degree, I agree with him because, you know, otherwise you'd literally be throwing out the entirety of black culture and that shouldn't be done. But you have to recognize, you know, that, um, you know, that uh, that black people were Americans we take bits and pieces of the American experience and, you know, we add our own our own little flavor to it, regardless of the fact that it came it originated with Europeans. You know, some people want to say, as Doug Titian used to say, we're Negropians. But anyway, my video is about to die or my my pad is about to die, my tablet. So let me um, end this video. That's my video. SWP. Don't forget to comment, share, like and subscribe.